Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Savory Summer Cheesecake. That's right, I am not a big dessert guy, and I almost always prefer an additional savory course instead. But if I am going to have dessert, cheesecake is one of my favorites. So when you combine those two facts, it is no surprise I tried an experiment with a savory cheesecake. And what follows is what I think was a very successful attempt. And to get started, we'll begin by sautéing a whole bunch of beautifully colored diced peppers over medium-high heat and a few tablespoons of olive oil, along with some diced onions, and of course the traditional giant pinch of salt. And while I'm doing this with a bunch of different colored sweet peppers, you can obviously also use hot, or a combination of both. So feel free to use anything you want. I mean, you are, after all, the Uncle Billy's of your chilies. But no matter what direction you decide to go when it comes to the heat, I do think we want to try to get this as colorful as possible. Since, I don't know, it just seems more summery. And what we'll do is saute these on medium-high heat until our onions just start to turn translucent and hopefully look a little something like this. And then once they do, what we'll do is make a little space in the middle into which we will transfer some crushed garlic. And we'll go ahead and saute that for a few seconds in the center before we stir everything together and then cook it another two minutes or so, at which point we're basically done. Okay, all we have to do is let this cool down to room temp before we use it. And once that's set, we can move on to make our cracker crumb crust, which for a regular sweet cheesecake, we would be crushing graham cracker crumbs. But here I'm just using some plain water crackers, but pretty much any non-sweet cracker will do. And once we have those crushed up fairly fine, we'll go ahead and add a pinch of dry Italian herb mix which includes oregano, thyme, and rosemary, among other things. And then we'll finish this off with some melted butter, at which point we'll give this a mix until those crumbs are coated. And believe it or not, that's it. And then what we'll do once we have that thoroughly blended is go ahead and transfer that into the bottom of a very well-buttered nine-inch springform pan. And we'll make sure we get that as evenly distributed as we can, at which point we'll give it a nice pressing down. And by the way, if you're thinking, couldn't we have saved a step and just bought herb-flavored crackers? Well, yes, we could have. And if I was smart, that's what I would have done. But unfortunately, I'm not that smart. And I've had to survive all these years on my good looks. But anyway, the point is, if you do find a nice herb-flavored cracker, feel free to use that. And that's it. Once our pan's been crumbed, we can simply set that aside, and we can move on to making our savory cheesecake batter, which will start with four large whole eggs, to which we will add a little bit of all-purpose flour, some salt, some freshly ground black pepper, plus a few shakes of cayenne pepper. And then even though this is going to be a savory cheesecake, I do want to add one small spoon of sugar just to balance out the other ingredients. And then once we have all that in there, we'll take a whisk and give this a thorough mixing until we have something that's very smooth and lump-free. Oh yeah, if you were hoping for lumps, you came to the wrong place. Which reminds me, if somebody knows Marco Pierre White, can you please tell him he doesn't have to add the flour gradually? that it works fine just like this. Actually, you know what? Just give me his number and I'll call him. But anyway, once that's mixed, we will stop. And we'll go ahead and add our creme fraiche. Or sour cream if you're not quite as cool. They both will work beautifully. And then we'll also at this point add our room temperature cream cheese. And then we'll finish up with some freshly grated Reggiano Parmesan. And then we'll take a whisk and mix this until it's completely smooth. Which is going to take a minute. And we'll want to start out kind of slowly. But if your cream cheese is room temp and nice and soft, everything's going to smooth out beautifully. But if it's not, and you forgot to take it out, and you're using cold, firm cream cheese, don't make any plans for the next 15 minutes. Because it's going to take a while for that stuff to soften up and smooth out. But either way, eventually it will look like this. And when it does, we will stop. And we will add our freshly chopped herbs. Which for me is parsley, tarragon, and thyme. And we'll also at this point add our now cooled pepper mixture. And we'll give all of this one final mix. And this is probably the perfect spot to mention that you could put any and all other savory ingredients in here and not just plant-based. Okay, imagine some cooked crumbled sausage with those peppers or a big handful of crisp bacon or maybe some boneless frog legs. Sorry, I was just watching some Olympic high jumping. But anyway, no matter what we decide to flavor this with, we'll go ahead and mix that in at which point we'll transfer this into our pan and smooth out the top. And while it does look nice, it makes things a little bit easier. You don't have to use a springform pan, but if you do use something with different dimensions, that of course will affect the cooking time. But that's fine, because I'm going to show you how to test to see if this is done. 
And yes, just to be safe, I did place this on a sheet pan. And that's it. Once filled, we'll give this the old tappa tappa, just to settle everything down. At which point we will transfer this into the lower center of a 325 degree oven for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Or until it looks like this. All right, towards the outside, it's going to be slightly risen with some small cracks. With the inside still being a little bit wobbly. And how we really know it's done is that a skewer stuck in the center will come out clean. All right, you see that? That is done. And then what we'll do at this point is absolutely nothing for 30 minutes. Okay, I just want you to stand there and stare at it. Or do whatever, but don't touch this for 30 minutes. And then before we remove the ring, I think we should go around with a thin, small knife just to make sure it's not stuck anywhere. And if it is, we'll try to unstuck it. And that's it. We'll go ahead and release the latch. And if everything goes according to plan, those sides should be beautifully golden brown. And we should have a minimum of crust crumbling. And by the way, let me go ahead and spin this around. Since, of course, the only spot that had crust crumbling was the one spot facing the camera. Way to go, universe. You got me again. And that's it. Before we serve this, we really should refrigerate this until it's thoroughly chilled. But in the name of science, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece now so we can test the texture at just over room temp. So I went ahead and cut a piece and plated it up. And for still being almost warm, it came out remarkably well. And I really did think it looked beautiful until I ruined everything with a sprinkling of chopped parsley. Right, seriously, I have to put that stuff away when I'm done using it. Since I saw a little bit sitting on the counter, so I chopped it up and tossed it on. And it added absolutely nothing to the presentation. But anyway, just ignore it. And yes, I think a nice green salad, with or without tomatoes, would be a perfect pairing. And that, my friends, was very, very interesting. Okay, it was delicious and very pleasant. But if you eat this at room temp or just slightly warm like this, the texture is going to be nothing like cheesecake. What this was very similar to was a super light, very luxurious, extra creamy quiche, which would have been fine if that's what I was going for. But I did not want a super light, luxurious, extra creamy quiche. What I really wanted was a savory cheesecake. So I took a few more bites just to be sure. And I also had Michelle take a few bites, who as you might know is my biggest fan and toughest critic. And she agreed with me that it was very, very interesting, yet texturally confusing and possibly disconcerting. So we popped it in the fridge and then cut and served up another slice once it was nice and firm and very cold. And this time with no parsley or salad. And this time because it was chilled and that cheese firmed up, the texture was spectacular and exactly how I was hoping it would be. All right, this had the exact mouthfeel of cheesecake, but with a wonderfully savory flavor profile. Okay, we still had some sweetness, thanks to the peppers and the onions and that tiny touch of sugar, but nowhere even remotely close to the sweetness of a dessert cheesecake. And overall, I really was thrilled with how this came out, and I will definitely be making it again for a wonderful summer lunch or dinner. Or of course, you could serve this for breakfast or brunch. Or to really blow some minds, if you were putting together like a charcuterie platter for a party, and you were doing meats and cheeses and pickles, some slices or cubes of this on that tray would definitely have people talking. And I think a lot of that talk would involve how delicious this was. Not to mention how innovative and creative you were. But no matter how you serve this, or for what occasion, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.